while you're here in Frankfurt, you're giving a couple of lectures, I think, um, called The Picture of Dorian Gray, A Step Too Far. Can you tell us a bit about those? Well, it's something which I felt for a very long time, which is that uh, people know the fact that Oscar went to prison for homosexual activities mm -hmm. and gross indecency, as mm -hmm. it was quaintly called at the mm -hmm. time. Uh, what many people are not aware of is the fact that Dorian Gray, as a work, is used against him in both the libel trial and his own trial against the Crown mm -hmm. uh, as proof of the fact of his being himself a homosexual. Mm. One of the things which Oscar felt, uh, certainly in the first trial and also in the first of his own trial, mm -hmm. was that his literature was being attacked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, I think, contributed not mm -hmm. only to his going to court and finishing up in prison, but also it was in part, I think, what the Victorians felt. Uh, here was this purveyor of moral decadence mm -hmm. who, although they couldn't imprison him for writing Dorian Gray, mm -hmm. uh, once he'd transgressed mm -hmm. the law and mm -hmm. had, had broken it as a homosexual, yes. now we've got him. Do you think Wilde was drawn to a certain self-destructive tendency within his life? By 1889, when he published an essay called The Decay of Lying, he was teetering on the edge of respectability, as mm -hmm. he saw it. Mm -hmm. And what he wanted to do, as I think he says in uh, A Woman of No Importance, the way to get into the best society these days is either to feed people, to entertain mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. or shock people. Mm -hmm. Well, he'd done the first two, mm -hmm. so he was then going to go on and shock people. And I think this is where Dorian Gray comes into his life. Um, his intention from that moment onwards is to shock the bourgeois. Mm -hmm. And that's where he is when Dorian Gray is published. And did it work? It certainly did. Yeah. Uh, there were column inches galore in the press, uh, vituperative criticism, uh, by the journalists of what they regarded as a perfectly disgusting novel because of the slightly uh, homosexual undertones. It's quite a complex family to be a part of. Even your surname, Holland, has a history behind it. Can you tell us about that? After Oscar's arrest, my grandmother, Constance, uh, sent her two boys abroad. Mm -hmm. Um, and very loyally stayed on right until the end of it, all his trials and beyond, mm. in case he got off. Yes. Um, but it was perfectly clear to her when she got to Switzerland and was apparently asked to leave a hotel by the proprietor um, because of who she was. Mm. It was bad for trade. Mm. Um, she knew she had to change the name mm. and mm. Uh, so reverted to an old family name on her side. Mm. This is my fourth trip back to this um, to the English Theatre Frankfurt. Um, it's a place that that, that I love. I, I love the staff here and the audience, and um, and I love the idea as well that there is an English speaking theatre of this scale and level of professionalism operating in the middle of Germany. I can't think of another English theatre uh, in Europe which has the same reputation no. and has had such an enormous success as, as this one in Frankfurt has. I feel that the English theatre, um, bringing English theatre to uh, Germany is most extraordinary. Do you think that audiences are going to take away from this something which perhaps is only uh, come to us in the last 20 or 30 years with all the social media and mm. so on and the selfie and um, the preoccupation with uh, both male and female beauty. Do you think the audiences are going to take away, I think what Oscar would probably hate, which is a moral and a lesson to this? I don't know whether they would take away a moral. Um, I hope they wouldn't. I hope they'd take away something that makes them think about the complexity of um, how we think about youth, how we think about image. The idea that there is a moral brings everything to a firm conclusion, <clears throat> whereas if it's an ongoing discussion, an yes. ongoing thought, yes. then in a sense there is no end to it. It yes. remains a subject of conversation and discussion. Yes. Do you in this play have a favourite quote? It's a play absolutely packed full of, of joyous Oscar Wilde wit. The quotation that always stands out for me um, is is Dorian 
um, saying, every time I sin, a stain will mark the picture's beauty. And in that single phrase, that encapsulates the message of that very complex novel. When Oscar was asked by one of his correspondents what his feelings about Dorian Gray were personally, he replies to him and says, Basil Hallward is what I think I am. Lord Henry is what the world thinks me. And Dorian Gray is what I would like to be. And that rather sums up his whole attitude towards his novel.